Hi everyone, my name's Laura and I'm the Specky Seamstress. Welcome to today's video, which is all about my rapidly growing collection of the Jennifer, Jennifer? <laughs> Jennifer Lauren Handmade Juniper Cardigan, um, which I'm going to show you all of the makes that I've done so far. Now, I was going to do a cardigan roundup video because I've also been sewing the new True Bias Marlowe sweater, um, which I was a pattern tester for, but... I think between the two of them I have 10 <laughs> makes and I thought that might be a bit much so I'm going to split it up into two videos I'm going to film the Marlowe sweater video as soon as this one is filmed and um, probably put them out a few days away from each other apart that's the word I'm looking for um, because yeah I just think I've got quite a lot to say <laughs> and all my videos have been really long recently and I thought maybe I would give you a little bit of a break from the long videos and um, before I start I did just want to say thank you for everyone who's commented and sent me a message about my bias binding tutorial video and um, it's the first tutorial video I've done and I was a little bit nervous about it but it seems to have gone down really well and I am hoping to film a few more um, for bias binding soon but also hopefully a few more other tutorials as well it's given me a bit of confidence which is nice Um also apologies for being a little bit ad hoc with videos at the minute I just don't think trying to stick to a weekly schedule is right for me at the minute with um work and global pandemic and business and <laughs> trying to film tutorials and things so you'll just have to bear with me a little bit I've got lots to show you so hopefully there'll be a little flurry of videos out um over the next few weeks because I'm also taking part in a new vlog tour that's coming soon and um, that I'm excited to, to share with you as well. So I said my videos were long, I've already been talking for two minutes and I haven't even really <laughs> started. So let's crack on with the Juniper cardigan. Now when I bought clothes rather than made them I loved a cardigan. <laughs> I wore cardigans all the time. Um, I am my mother's daughter and a cardigan is my friend and I had never really been able to find the sort of cardigan I liked um, in sewing patterns. So if you've been following me for a while, you'll know I tried the Helen's Closet Blackwood cardigan um, early last year, late 2019, maybe, and didn't get on with it <laughs> at all. And it's so popular and, and it's just not my style. It's nothing to do with the pattern. Um, but I like a cropped fitted cardigan to go with nice dresses. I like my cardigans to be a little bit too small really um, but that's just the style that I like to wear. And I had tried the Fuller cardigan by Cashmeret, I talked about this in my Christmas sewing plans vlog I think and <laughs> really didn't like it and surprised me and I think it really disappointed me because I thought it was exactly what I was looking for and it just wasn't but Lynn who is old soul on Instagram and who watches these videos so hello Lynn um had suggested to me about this time last year that I should try the juniper cardigan and I bought it immediately and then I didn't make it for a year and I think partly because you know lockdown hit and I was wearing more big slouchy things and, and actually it's quite funny because one of the reasons I didn't really like the Blackwood cardigan is because I never really saw myself wearing big slouchy cardigans. I only had one of those and it was like my I'm not well and I feel cold and, and sad cardigan. It was like a big cocoon cardigan. But actually the True Bias Marlowe sweater, which I'm wearing one of now, I love. Um, so, I mean, beats me what, <laughs> what to make of that. Partly I think 2020 has changed my style a little bit. And um, partly the True Bias Marlowe is just like a particular type of, sort of vintage, oversized, slouchy that is just good. Um, but yeah, I, I hadn't seen myself in those types of cardigans. So, But then all of a sudden I just wanted kind of comfy, cosy things. And I made myself some jumpers that I've shown you and, and just kind of, yeah, cosy, cosy. I wasn't really dressing up in dresses to wear little cardigans with. So I, I don't really know what spurred me on to make the first version to be honest it had been in my to make list for such a long time and I think that I finally I mean I realized that the only cardigan I had left from my kind of ready to wear days were was one black cardigan that I had and it's starting to look a little bit worse for wear and 
I just started to make some basics. You know, I, I've, I've made a few roll neck tops and just things that will really help layer in my wardrobe. And cardigans were really missing from that um, for a style that I really loved, but hadn't really worn for quite a while, really, since I started dressmaking. So I thought, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to make the juniper. And I told you that I'd ummed and ahed about what fabric to use. And I, um, everyone said, use the Ikea blanket. It's great. I did. It was great. Um, I made this up. It's a nice quick make. The the, the shoulders on the, um, or the style lines on the juniper are really interesting because they're like a saddle. I think they're called a saddle shoulder, um, which means great opportunity for colour blocking. And I've got some more plans. I'm going to talk to you about the end of this video um, for some colour blocked versions as well but I made it up I loved it there were a couple of fit things I wanted to change so this is the Jennifer Lauren Juniper in the standard sizing so some of you know that I'm doing some fit work for the extended sizing block for Jennifer Lauren Handmade but this is the standard size range mostly because the style of cardigan I wear as I said is probably too small <laughs> So I didn't really mind that it was going to be, you know, a little bit tight, maybe across the bust. I normally wear cardigans open. Um, so, yeah, I, I wasn't too concerned. So I made this up in the size 20, which is my standard size in, in the Jennifer Lauren um, block. I usually make the 20 cup size D. Um, and, yeah, I, I the only fit things I needed to change were I want I had to make a slight adjustment for my narrow shoulders because it was a saddle shoulder it was a little bit difficult to do um but I took a sort of wedge out of the seam where the shoulder front shoulder meets the the front bodice um to try and sort of pinch in a little bit of fabric both horizontally and vertically and it was a little bit trial and error and I'm certainly not going to say this is the way that you should do this because I don't think it really is but it's just what sort of worked for me I, I wore the I wore the cardigan a bit and then I <laughs> went from there and decided what to do but I yeah I, I just loved it basically I wanted to add a tiny bit of extra to the centre front um, and a tiny bit of extra length did I add length to the centre? yes to the centre front um, I did find overall it was quite long um, for, for the cropped version for me, but uh, it needed sort of levelling up. It rose up a little bit because of my bust um, at the centre front. So I shortened the hemline, but lengthened the centre front, if that makes any sense at all. Um, and then I basically just binge made loads of cardigans. <laughs> so I'd made this green one which I, I'm not 100% sure will get lots and lots of wear it's a patterned cardigan which I've never felt hugely comfortable in but I have, I have got some plain dresses to make so maybe I'll yeah I don't know it goes quite well with my dinosaur dress that I'm wearing it in in the pictures so who knows we shall we shall see on that front um but I decided to binge make some primary colour <laughs> cardigans and then I went on a bit of a sweater knit rabbit hole because sweater knit's quite hard to get in the UK and I think I talked about this in my Christmas vlog that I like my cardigans to look like knitwear which is exactly why I'd bought the Ikea blanket because I thought it was um you know one of the only ways I was going to find proper knitwear fabric but I did manage to find some so I have the blue meat milk or is it mine the maker like the eco lensing fibers viscose sweater knit stuff <laughs> from so me sunshine which i had in a bright royal blue and that was the next one that i made i had enough faith in the pattern to uh cut my beautiful nice fabric <laughs> that i was a little bit nervous about using because it was quite expensive um, I managed to cut that from the meter that I had just I had so little scraps left of this and I'll talk about that in in a minute as well because I had a scrap busting project at the end but um I managed to make it from the meter and it's probably I don't know if I could call it my favorite one of the of the batch that I've made because all of them are great but they're all quite different fabrics like one of the things I'm kind of learning with the sweater knits is sweater knit can mean so many things <laughs> to different companies um that it's a little bit hard to hard to judge but this one is quite 
um, thin and drapey. It's still really warm. Actually, it's one of the warmest ones, but um, it's very fine and it feels like some of the merino um, cardigans I've had in the past and actually the Gap merino cardigan that I have, the, the one ready to wear cardigan I have at the minute. Um, so it's it's nice and soft and, and sort of quite a drapey um, fabric. So you could use this one for the long version of the Juniper cardigan, which has just one button or two buttons, I think, at the top. Obviously, you could have buttons down the rest of it if you wanted. That's like long line um, and it would drape really nicely. But long line cardigan's not really my thing. So I won't be doing that. <laughs> but it was really lovely. Um, and I added some very cute Ethel and Joan buttons to it because why not like I, I sort of forgot that you don't just have to add the little pearlized buttons that match that come on all of the cardigans <laughs> that exist in ready to wear so that was quite a nice discovery um but the other fabrics that I bought so there's a, a it's a fabric called baby knit which you can get from a few different places I bought from Eliza Mac fabrics I bought the yellow must it's like a, I think it was called ochre um they also have it in cream which I might use for some colour blocking at another point. But um, I bought that. That is like a slightly heavier, like cotton. You could make a really nice, like, roll neck jumper in it or something. It's quite kind of uh, sturdy. But it's a really cute colour and a nice weight for the time of year that it is in the UK. <laughs> winter, I think, is what I'm trying to say there. It's a nice weight for winter and it's nice and cosy. It doesn't have as much stretch. Um, I like the fit of this one and I added um, amber buttons to it, sort of, I suppose, tortoise shelly type buttons, but kind of, yeah, they look kind of ambery, which, again, really liked. Then I made red and green versions in a fabric called Victoria Sweater Knit from Minerva. I don't know why it's called Victoria Sweater Knit and slightly bizarrely on their new website they have... Um, like previous makes in that fabric really easy to see which is great but the fur the one they show you for the victoria sweater knit is like a, a pair of trousers i think or leggings or something and i wouldn't i wouldn't personally make that from from this fabric it is what i would call the closest to ready to wear cardigan fabric that i have found and it's really affordable it is a poly mix um i kind of don't mind poly mixes for uh, for cardigans the whole point is to keep cozy and warm <laughs> so I'm not too worried I think it was acrylic um and I think acrylic is often what ready to wear cardigans are made from so I bought this in red and green it was a real like post box red well sort of yeah po like slightly deeper like a scarlet type color I suppose and um also uh, the green which was called emerald green but it's kind of more of a teal. I put a photo up, I sent a photo to my mum comparing it to my cutting mat, which I suppose is slightly more forest green, but it's it's definitely got quite a teal vibe to it, which I am digging. But yeah, just to re sort of remember that if <laughs> if you uh, want to make some. Um, so yeah, this is the most like ready to wear cardigan fabric that I've, I've used. And something to note is that on the original green one that I made, I've just remembered I've forgotten one that I made. That's saying something about how many of these I've made already. Um, on the first one, the Ikea blanket, I hand stitched down the neckline. So you make up the cardigan, um, you attach the hemband, and then the last thing you do is attach the neckband. And the pattern says fold it in half and just overlock it round. But I've always found it quite hard to get nice, like, nicely lined up at the top and bottom, at the, well, at the bottom left and bottom right, <laughs> um, when you do that. And the Marlow sweater, this one, um, uses two methods. You can choose to do that or you can choose to do um, a bit like a shirt. You know, you sew it on one um, and then you fold it back on itself so you get like a nice clean corner. I haven't explained that well at all, but... Um, yeah, you get a nice clean corner and I thought I would do that. But the Juniper cardigan has a much narrower <laughs> neckband than the Marlow sweater. And it worked okay on the hand stitching it down, worked okay on the um what am I talking about here? I've got myself confused. What I did for the Marlow sweater was top stitch it down with the machine because I used quite a thick 
um, sturdy fabric really but that wasn't going to work on the Ikea blanket so I hand stitched it down instead because I realised the fabric would just kind of be too shifty for me to get a nice top stitch clean finish so I hand stitched it down and that worked fine for the for the Ikea blanket because it was quite a, like a structured fabric and then I did it on a grey colour blocked version which was the second one I made and I just forgot um, with rainbow striped grey on the body and just plain grey on the on the sleeves the plain grey was also the victoria sweat in it from minerva but they've sold out in grey now and i'm hoping it will come back because i think it will be quite useful to have some more um and the hand stitching didn't really work as well so i went all the others i've gone back to the version where you just fold in half and overlock round and what i've discovered is that you can just hand stitch the um band if you need to if you didn't quite make it up level i have rambled a lot in this video and i don't think i'm making a lot of sense and i've already got to a really long video even though i said i was going to make it short so i'll crack on then i have i made any more well yes i made my scrap busting version so when i got to the end of my little sweater cardigan binge i um looked at all of my leftovers and i thought well it's not like when you end up with cotton leftovers and you can use them for pocket bags or um knits and you can use them for neck bands and things like kind of sweater knits can only really be used for sweaters and i had some reasonable sized sort of scraps of some of these fabrics so i got to work planning a color blocked version which i am in love with and okay i said maybe the blue might be my favorite but this is definitely my favorite although it won't be the one that gets the most wear <laughs> um this is I, I somehow feel like this has got very 50s vibes to it and i don't really know why it kind of looks a little bit like a college jumper maybe like a college jacket but yeah i love this so much it was such a good way to use up the scraps i said i didn't have many of blue scraps that blue cuff is cut is pieced together <laughs> that's how few blue scraps i had but i had sizable scraps of other things um, the back is in the it is in a navy soft knit from Sew Me Sunshine, uh, which I've used the other the rest of to make a Helen's Closet Elliot sweater for my mum, and it just kind of sets it off quite nicely. So, yeah, I'm super happy with that one. Um, it's gonna get more wear than I thought it was originally when I made it. Um, I've bought a black and white striped jersey to make myself a new dress uh, like simple day dress and I think it will get a lot of wear with that because it looked so much better with the um Zadie jumpsuit that I took photos in it with than I kind of thought in my head I was like oh I take pictures of that with a nice plain plain black dress I don't own a plain black dress <laughs> um the nearest thing I had was a stripy black and white jumpsuit yeah I have several other versions planned the main one that I'm gonna tell you about well two i'll tell you about two um quickly <laughs> i have a fabric from grid fabrics which i'm going to pop a picture in here which is a beautiful jacquard knit from cocker uh, the the japanese brand and they have it in several colors and i bought it in the yellow i'm mumming and ahhing about whether that was the right decision but there we go and i'm going to use them for the two front pieces of a juniper which i can't decide what color yet to match it with i think i might go cream but I might go black. Let me know what you think. But also I have this jumper, which is a beautiful alpaca wool jumper that I bought in Ecuador on my honeymoon with my husband, obviously that's <laughs> the point. Um, and I love it, but it doesn't fit and it never sat very nicely anyway, but I just loved the colours of it. Um, and I'm going to try and make myself a colour blocked juniper cardigan with this on the front um, panels because how beautiful will that be and i've got bought a um beige like oatmeal colored plain fabric plain sweater knit fabric from uh, neo trims who sell on ebay to pair with it and there are so many details that i think i could probably yeah make quite a cool cardigan with this i need to, to plan and plot and and cut it apart and work out what to do but i'm very excited about actually being able to wear this because i only wore this once on my honeymoon <laughs> um so it will be nice to actually get some proper wear of it and it's so beautiful 
so yes they're the two versions i'll tell you about but i am also going to be on the hunt in charity shops when i can get back shopping again um for fun grandad jumpers that i can put panels of fronts of juniper cardigans and i'm just excited about wearing lots of cardigans again over cool dresses it's actually set me off on a bit of a oh and i'd like this oh and i'd like this journey which has led me to making my own belts because i you know needed another thing to do with my life um because i like the look of a fit and flare dress with a cardigan and a belt so now i have these in every color as well <laughs> i can really mi mix and match thanks so much for watching this ended up being so much longer than i thought it would i'm now going to film my marlo sweater cardigan video which will come out in a few days and yeah let me know what you think of my many many cardigans of color Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye.